This lesson is about rivers. It's about using fieldwork to investigate a river. Let's use Google Earth to locate this area. South coast of England, there's Southampton, a little bit east is the New Forest National Park. The river is called the Highland Water and the survey area, I'm just going to show you zooming in now. This area is very interesting from a historical point of view because it was an area that was very wood wooded with oak trees that were used here for warships in the time of Elizabeth I and Henry VIII. Here is the small river. It's very unusual for the floodplain to be forested like this in southern England. Most river valley floodplains have been cleared for farmland. This river was altered in Victorian times with the result that flow rate was high, erosion was high, lots of sediment was being washed through. In the mid 1990s, this river was restored. The meanders were dug, gravel was used to fill and non-native trees were cut and removed. These stumps show you where these non-native trees were removed. The scheme involved the National Park Authority and Southampton University. Here is the survey area. And the first area of investigation is flow in a river. We had two types of flow meter available. If you look at this section of the river, you can see the flow varies quite considerably. What do you think are the key factors for variations in flow in a river? The most important of these factors is probably gradient. This type of flow meter has a small propeller and a little gauge, and the gauge measures the number of re revolutions. You can convert the number of revolutions to meters per second flow rate with this chart. To make a really accurate survey, we could have stretched a measuring tape across the river, taken regular measurements of flow rate at regular intervals and at regular depths. 30. 60. 90. 90. Yeah, roughly. Oh, no, no, no. Water velocity tracks so, uh, over. Yeah, nearly, nearly 60. We measured flow rate in four places in a four metre stretch of the river and these were our results. This is a more sophisticated flow metre. It's electromagnetic. Ready? Yep. To start and it will come up saying initialising the electromagnetic. So it's just kicks 0 0.07 and this one has come out with an average of 0 0.066. Pretty pretty can you just lift that, that up so I can see it? There you go. An advantage with this type of flow meter is you can measure the different heights in the flow much more easily, but it is much more expensive. How can a river floodplain be surveyed accurately? One way would be to do um, a careful photographic survey over a period. Another way is to use something like this, a sophisticated 3D digital scanner costing £60,000. Plus you also need a weather resistant laptop to recover the information and a big battery pack. This thing can record an incredible amount of information in a short space of time. The 3D digital scanner can be located exactly using a handheld GPS and then you can return to the same spot and scan the same area, say three or six months later. 
Thirdly, how do you investigate soils? <laughs> you could use a trowel, but we had these soil augers that gave you a kind of core of soil. <laughs> Look at that, that's a lovely soil. You can see here this is mostly clay, very sticky in the hand. This sample is further away from the river, up the bank under the trees, as you can see here. So I'll just tell you quickly how we do some veg surveying. This may never come out. Dry your hair, guys. <laughs> Don't want to go in someone's hole. When, you, when you've dug your hole and you, you light your hole, then you've had a look in the field and everything, then put the soil back in the hole so someone doesn't do, or a, or a pony doesn't put a hoof in. With this method, you can achieve a soil profile about a metre deep. You can make notes on the different soils you find. So we have looked at a river in the New Forest and we've looked at methods of fieldwork for investigating river flow rate, surveying a floodplain and sampling soil.